Hi guys, welcome back to my homeschool channel. Today I wanted to talk to you about learning through literature and about how to incorporate that in your homeschool day. And I wanted to share with you a few of the resources that I am using this year to incorporate more literature-based learning for my fourth graders. One of my main goals as a homeschool mom is to raise girls that love how to read. I want my girls to be lifelong readers and to enjoy learning about other people and other cultures through books. Since raising lifelong readers has always been a goal of mine, there's a couple of things that I've done from the beginning to try and make that happen. I have filled up our home with books. In the early years, I really like to just focus on books that my kids are interested in and that they find fun and engaging, so tons of picture books. And then as they grew older, I started moving into chapter books. And we started off with the children's classics, things like E.B. White's Charlotte's Web, Beverly Cleary's Mouse on the Motorcycle. And then as my oldest has continued to grow in her reading abilities and her love of reading, we've introduced more and more. And my younger ones have just come along for the ride and they love to listen in to the read alouds that my oldest daughter is doing now or that I'm doing with her. Last year when she was in third grade, I wanted to introduce literature-based studies, but I didn't want to make it too overbearing or too hard. I wanted reading to still be enjoyable for her. So I was really excited when I found Confessions of a Homeschooler's Literature Studies that went along with the Classic Start series. These lap book style literature based learning packets from Confessions of a Homeschooler were the perfect introduction to teaching my third grader how to think a little bit more critically about the book that she was reading and how to start analyzing the characters and problems in a book. I love that the pages were interactive so it had questions for each chapter but it had her fill them out in a lap book style so she could cut out the mini books and color them and then paste them into a lap book and then create a fun little packet of information about the book that she had just read. This really helped with retaining the information that she learned and it helped her to see the book as a whole picture and a whole story. It helped her to see how characters grew from start to finish and how they changed. And it was just the perfect amount of work to help her to engage more deeply with the book without making her dread the project that she was having to do, which was exactly what I wanted for that grade. I also loved how Confessions of a Homeschooler included fun pages like a movie versus a book report. So when we finished a book, we would find the movie to watch it, like Swiss Family Robinson or Pollyanna. And then my daughter could use this page to write down the differences that she saw between the movie and the book. Sometimes I would just have her tell me orally what she thought, and sometimes she would write down on the page and stick it in her lap book that she had created. They also had simple book report pages, which was a great introduction to writing a book report. If you're looking for a fun and gentle way to introduce literature-based studies to your kids, definitely check out Confessions of a Homeschooler and her unit packets. Most of these are on her website for about $5 and you just download the PDF and print off the papers that you want. This year, I wanted to challenge my oldest a little bit more and help her dive into the books a little bit more. So we're gonna be continuing our literature-based studies and we're gonna be using literature guides from Total Language Plus and from Memoria Press. I have one of each because I wasn't sure which one I like better, I couldn't make the decision. So we're gonna use Total Language Plus first, and then we're gonna try out the Memoria Press one. And then after that, I'll decide which one I wanna purchase for the remaining of the year. So the first one we're gonna be using this year is Total Language Plus, and it's gonna be going along with the book, The Courage of Sarah Noble. These books are gonna be independent reads for my fourth grader. She's gonna read them on her own. They're not gonna be read aloud. And then she's gonna work through the lessons in the student packet. Total Language Plus Student Guide incorporates a few different language arts disciplines, including reading, vocabulary, spelling, grammar writing, enrichment, and art projects. They have it split up in the beginning so you can see an overview of what you're going to be doing for the seven units that it involves. And it says it's going to take one to two weeks to complete each unit. After looking through the book, I think that we can complete all of the lessons that are included in a unit in one week. So that'll be my goal for my fourth grader to finish this study guide in seven weeks. One of the things I like about Total Language Plus compared to the Memoria Press study guide is that it offers these in enrichment activities or field trip ideas. And in the beginning of the book, they kind of give you an overview of your options for each chapter. They don't expect you to do all of those enrichment activities, but they're just giving you a bunch of suggestions. I like how that's in the beginning so that you can kind of prepare and plan ahead and choose which ones you think will be doable for your family. So here's a look inside and see what the lessons look like. This is written directly to your student. There is a teacher's manual that you can buy, but it's a generic teacher's manual with just general ways that you can teach literature. 
um, the answers to these questions, I think, are provided in the back of this book. So you don't need a teacher's manual to find the answers. Yeah, there's the answer key. So you don't need a teacher's manual for this. It's just the student guide and then the book that you'll need to use this curriculum. And then it's set up so that your kid reads about two pages a day for this book. This Courage of Sarah Noble is not very thick. So my kid would read about two, two pages and then she would come down and she'd answer the questions that went along with the pages that she read. Um, if she had, didn't read that information that week or that day, then she would just wait till the next day um, until she had completed the two chapters required for the week. Then she would go on to do one vocabulary exercise that day. And you can see that each um, discipline that's included in this book has the exercises split up by letters. So A and then B, C and so forth. And so they just complete one of those each day and then they move on to spelling. So she would complete vocabulary A and then she would complete spelling A and then she would come and complete the grammar and writing assignment for A and those would all be on the same day. And then there is one art project included for the whole week. So you can determine when that would be a good day for your child to do that. And then it moves on to unit two. At the beginning of the chapter, it tells you the projects and field trips ideas that you can do for that chapter. So again, it gives you a chance to prepare for those right away and to think about what you want your child to do as a little hands-on activity for that week. And then it moves into, again, the reading, the vocabulary, the different lessons. You'll have to make sure your child understands that this is where they look for the next exercise. They're not just going down the page. They're gonna be having to flip back and forth as they complete each exercise each day. In the back, they've provided all of the vocabulary words in a format that you could print out and create flashcards out of if you wanted to. And then they also provide the answer key in the back for all of the sequencing activities, and for the comprehension questions, which is nice that it's just all right there. And then here's a peek inside of Memoria Press's student literature guide. So we'll be reading Farmer Boy for this one, and it's set up just a little bit differently, but it covers very similar aspects of language arts. Memoria Press study guide is set up in a way that requires a lot more reading than the Total Language Plus. So in this one, you are reading a chapter a day and you're doing one lesson a day to go with that chapter. If you did a lesson a day and a chapter a day, you would complete this study guide in 29 days or about six weeks. So the same amount of time that Total Language Plus is having you do, theirs was I think seven weeks, um, but you're doing significantly more reading with this Memoria Press Guide because there's a lot more chapters in this book compared to the Courage of Sarah Noble book and where you're only reading a couple pages a day and here you're having to read a whole chapter a day. So um, that's one of the reasons that we're going to start off with Total Language Plus and see how we do with that and then we will move into this one. Since this book has about 30 chapters, 29 chapters, they've kind of split it into three sections and it has a quiz at the end of each section which Total Language Plus doesn't have and then it has a final test review. It gives you, it doesn't give you a schedule but it sort of gives you some teaching guidelines for how to get started and then their pages are set up like this. They have you read the reading assignment for the day and then they have their vocabulary and their comprehension questions. They pull out a few quotations from the book for you to recite, some discussion questions, which I felt like Total Language Plus didn't necessarily have the discussion questions. They had the comprehension questions, um, but these dive a little bit more into analyzing the book and the characters and finding out things like what would the weather be like in that part of the country. So really getting your child to think critically about that. And then at the end of each lesson, it has an enrichment activity. These enrichment activities are different for for each lesson. So this one is a copywork lesson. This one has you draw a map. This one has you write down the meaning of these words or phrases that are unique to this book. So they change with each lesson. But one thing that they focus, I think, the most on is composition. So they're really trying to help your student develop their ability to write clear and concise sentences and communicate effectively with good grammar. So at the end of the first 10 lessons, they have a page for elements of literature, 
where you can dive a little bit deeper into the story and you can help your child to analyze the characters and the setting and the plot. And they also have an art project that your child can complete. And then before moving on, they have you just pause and do a little bit of a vocabulary review. This book doesn't include any spelling. It just includes vocabulary words. And then they also have a short answer quiz review to help with retention and help see what your child has remembered from those first few chapters. You could always do this orally if your child's not a strong writer, or you could have your child fill in the lines. And then it moves on to the next section and it starts all over again for the next 10 chapters. If after seeing a peek inside of those two literature-based studies, you feel like that would be a little too much for your child, go to confessionsofahomeschooler.com and check out all of the literature guides that she has that go along with these classic start books. These books have been so fun to read with my kids. My eight-year-old really loved them last year and we always want to buy more whenever we're at our local book exchange. So highly recommend grabbing these as kind of an introduction to some classic literature for your kids. So inside these, it kind of just gives you some instruction on how to make a lap book. And then each chapter, it has an activity guide. It tells you what to do in your lap book. It tells you what mini book you're going to be creating. And then it gives you some comprehension questions. And it's broken down like that for each chapter. It has some final activities that you complete. And then it has an optional movie night in it gives you the movie suggestion, which we did when we finished the book, we watched the Anne of Green Gables movie and that was really fun. So those first few pages were the study guide and then it has the activity pages that your student completes. And you can have them complete the page where they think that based off of just the cover of the book, what they think the story is gonna be about. And then this is an example of the mini book that they would complete this one and this one go together. So they would look up what the word means and write it in the boxes and then they would fold this up and they would stick it into this pocket. This creates a little pocket in their lap book. And they have a mini book like that for each chapter. They're all look different. So at the end, you have a fun lap book full of a ton of different little cute mini books that they've colored and created. They also have a literature timeline that your student can complete. And then aside from the mini books, they have some pages that your child can fill out if you wanna challenge them a little bit further. You can teach them what protagonist versus antagonist means and have them describe those from the book. Here's another separate page for your child to fill out that is not a lap book. And then at the very end, they give a page that is laid out for an easy book report. This was a great way to introduce book reports for my third grader last year. And then the final book versus movie page looks like this. So again, if you're looking for something that's more of a gentle approach into literature-based studies, definitely check out this website and see all that she has to offer on there for literature guides. Including an emphasis in literature in your homeschool can provide so many benefits to your kids. It can really help with their language development. It exposes your kids to rich vocabulary that can help them learn how to communicate their thoughts and feelings more effectively. It can teach them critical thinking skills and teach them how to analyze problems. A lot of times in books, characters face a moral dilemma and your children can learn how to analyze that dilemma, sort through the motives of the character, evaluate evidence, and learn how to form their own opinions on a problem that characters are facing. Literature can really provide a great way to teach your kids cultural and historical understanding. Books have long since given us a window into other people's lives, into other worlds. It gives us a peek into the past and takes us places that we may never get to visit in our lifetime and see with our own eyes. So by providing diverse books for your kids to read, you are opening up a door for them into these other worlds, which can teach them how others experience life and help them gain a broader understanding of the world around them. They can get to know characters in books and experience their emotions, their struggles, their joys, and their triumphs. This can really help them to relate well to others and to help them see things from other people's perspectives in the real world. Reading is also really great for strengthening those imagination muscles in your kids and their creativity. When we immerse our kids into fictional worlds, we really help them to create mental images of characters and places in their head, which is so beneficial for their development. And it's even a wonderful gift that God gave us that we can carry into adulthood if we have a strong development of that in our early years. Incorporating literature into our homeschool is something that is so important to me because of all of the benefits that it offers. However, I want to make sure that reading stays fun in our family. I never want it to feel like a chore for my kids to read. So I'm going to continue to pick books that I think will interest my kids. And as we move through these literature studies with my fourth grader, if things start to feel like they are a chore 
and if they are getting to be drudgery and not a joy, then I'll reevaluate as we go through the books and I'll adjust the curriculum to fit what I think will encourage my kids to love reading and to continue wanting to read the books because to me, that's the most important thing. It's not necessarily analyzing the vocabulary words or learning to spell or answering the comprehension questions and writing a book report. Those are all good things, but I want to bring up my kids gently in those skills. And so we'll use these books as a tool this year since it's our first year going through them. And I'll just continue to keep the mindset that reading should be fun and should be a joy, that reading should be a fun and joyful way to learn about the world. So that's my main goal this year. And if you're going to do literature-based learning, I encourage you to keep that in the back of your mind as well. Thank you guys so much for watching my video today. If it was helpful, then please like this video and let me know in the comments. And also, I'd love to hear if you've used any literature-based studies in your homeschool. I know that there are tons of other things out there. Brave Writer is another literature-based study that you can look into using with your kids. I didn't share that today because I don't have much experience with that, but something else for you to check out, and I'll link that in the description below just so you can have some more options. Before you head out, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and check me out on Instagram at Pillars and Press where you can see more of our curriculum picks for this year and some more daily homeschool encouragement and content. Until next time, happy homeschooling.